Trucker Dump for July 9th, 2010, episode 46, The Tale of Three Slobs. Welcome to Trucker Dump, where you'll get one driver's insights and sometimes humorous views of truck driving and the trucking industry, and pretty much anything else he feels like dumping on you. This podcast is brought to you by AboutTruckDriving.com. Resources to help you understand the world of truck driving through the use of stories and a pathetic attempt at humor. Howdy folks, Todd McCann here. Oh boy, what to say about today's podcast. Well, one thing's for sure, this is a huge problem in the trucking industry. The average Joe thinks truckers are nasty. While that's not true of all of us, wait. No, my pits are fine. It is a problem. <laughs> You'll see what I mean when you're done with The Tale of Three Slobs. In the last 24 hours, I saw three different truckers do three things that disturbed me. That's pretty bad, considering I spend about 23 hours and 50 minutes alone in my truck. Two of these things I see all the time. The third I knew happened, but had never actually seen it with my own eyes. Now I'm wishing that I hadn't. Be forewarned, this isn't pretty. The first thing I saw was the most disturbing. Being the sweetie pie that I am, I'll save it for last. The second thing I saw was early this morning when I got up and ventured into the bathroom to brush my teeth. As I walked in, I noticed an extremely short but stocky older guy standing at the sink doing his morning ritual. I could tell right away that this guy was a slob. Any driver will tell you that truck stop bathrooms are nasty. The sink countertop is always covered with water, excess soap, soggy paper towels, facial hair, you name it. Every trucker will act all grossed out about it, too. So if everyone is put out by it, who the heck is making all the mess? Well, for starters, my morning companion. He was washing his face and hands, and water was going everywhere. And I don't mean just on the countertop. I mean everywhere. It soaked the front of his shirt, the countertop, and it was even splashing onto the floor. If there hadn't been an empty sink between us, I'm sure he would have gotten me wet, too. He didn't even bother to dry anything off, including himself. So there's offense number one, not cleaning up after yourself. I was finishing up when Aquaman finally left. As I was preparing to follow, a guy stepped out of a bathroom stall and walked out the door in front of me. And there's offense number two. Whether you go number one or number two, wash your freaking hands. I mean, you may be fine with touching your special parts, but when you don't wash your hands, you put your funk all over everything you touch. So knock it off. I will congratulate him on one thing, though. He'd been there the whole time and I hadn't noticed. For once, there wasn't a god-awful stench and loud noises coming from the stall. It was as quiet as a church mouse wearing tiny little moccasins. Now, I'm not stupid, or so I keep telling myself. I know certain noises and scents coming from certain body parts can't be helped. Still, it's gross to have to hear it from someone other than yourself. Why God put us together that way is a mystery. I'm sure a lot of wives will be asking him that very question when they get through the pearly gates. Since St. Peter is a man, let's hope for their sakes there's no farting in heaven. The part that really bugs me are the noises that come out of the other end. I tell you, if you aren't in severe pain caused by some rare gastrointestinal infection that you picked up in the Amazon, keep your grunts, groans, and heavy breathing to yourself. No one's interested in hearing it. So, while I commend Mr. Allergic to Soap for doing his business so unobtrusively, I'm not about to shake the guy's hand. And I certainly hope he wasn't heading over to the deli to pick up some finger foods. Now on to the last guy. Or would it be the first guy? Yeah, it's the first guy. That I'm mentioning last. Yeah. I met this guy the night before. I was catching up on season three of Supernatural when my own Supernature called. Rather than using the parking lot as my personal commode like so many truckers do, I ran into the bathroom. Another guy walked in right behind me. Great. Two urinals with no dividers. Who designs these freaking things anyway? So we both step up to do our business. And that's when the fun started. First, I need to say that I'm not a peeker. Most guys aren't. We stare straight ahead and don't say a word. That's why there's always an advertisement of some kind right there at eye level. Women, on the other hand, well... You ladies carry on conversations while you're taking care of business. What's up with that? So back to my ordeal. As I'm staring straight ahead, I hear a sound. It's a splashing sort of sound. From my peripheral vision, I can see that this guy is totally missing the urinal. Well, not totally. 
but I'd say that only half of the gold is making it into the pot. Why, you may ask? Well, because he's got one hand on his hip and the other hand holding his shirt up over his belly. Furthermore, he does absolutely nothing to adjust his aim. Now, how do I react? I figure I've got two choices. Say something or don't. My initial reaction was to say, Can you not see it? You're pissing all over the floor. Nah, too confrontational. Not my style. Perhaps I could have been more witty by saying, I hope you don't have any career plans to be a sharpshooter. But in the end, I went with silence and a step away from him. After all, if a guy can't cover up his gut and put at least one hand on his junk, I doubt that anything I could say would make this guy go to a community college and enroll in Whizzing 101. As a grand finale, he grabbed hold and shook it like he was trying to strangle an anaconda, which, of course, released more venom. So there you have it. Like I said, I always knew that wet stuff on the floor wasn't water. I knew how it got there. I really think that knowing was enough. I didn't really need to see it firsthand. I do understand that no man hits his target every time, especially with that weird viper piss that strikes some mornings. The difference is, most guys adjust their aim. There is a moral to this story. Truckers don't get much respect, and from what I've seen over the last 13 years, I'm not surprised. It's not just the bathroom issues that I've pointed out here. It's the way we treat other people's property. It's the way we drive. It's the way we talk on the CB. It's the way we react when we're disrespected. Truckers one and all, listen up. It's as easy as this. If you want respect, start being respectful. How the heck do you expect the outside world to respect us if we don't respect each other first? You can start by always having one hand on the wheel. And other places. Hey, yo, bud, where do you want this load of feedback? Alrighty then. Uh, let's go back to our last podcast and see what people had to say about the one called Riding Along with the Trucker. Lucinda wrote in. She's the one I wrote the article for. Uh, she says, Absolutely love this post. I'm looking forward to the day I get to go with Alan, but I know it's going to require some adjustments for both of us. Your article gave me some great insights and suggestions. Thanks for writing it. Well, Lucinda, thanks for giving me something to write about. Glad it helped. Helmet or Heels says, Todd, I think you should have your own advice column. <laughs> okay. Then you can get paid for writing, get syndicated, and quit driving. Well, Helmet or Heels, that's a great idea. I think I'll start my advice column right now. My advice to you is, bong hits kill brain cells. <laughs> and lastly, Truck Driving Jobs says, First of all, I have fun reading your article, and it makes me wonder how it really is living on the road. I even wanted to experience it. <laughs> well, come on out, Truck Driving Jobs. We're ready for you. She goes on to say, I think just like what Pat said, it's important that you get along well with your husband if you plan to travel with him because that will make it more fun. Unlike if you didn't get along with each other, it would just become stressful. Boy, that's for sure. I think joining with our partner on the road is really fun and can create better relationships experiencing life together. But just like what you said to Lucinda, if she's not sure about it yet, I guess there's no harm in trying and who knows. I think she'll come to really enjoy and love it. Well, Truck Driving Jobs, thanks for stopping by and leaving a comment over there on the blog post. What you said is true. If you don't get along with your potential travel partner, things will probably only get worse from there on out. If you do get along, sometimes the only way to find out if it'll work is to jump in with both feet. And hope you don't land in a big old pile of dog poo. Thanks to everyone who wrote in about this podcast. You've got questions, concerns, or criticisms? You're getting ready to find out how you can send in a comment of your own. Okay, folks, I know you've seen some nasty people and their bad habits out there. Let's hear about them and anything else that makes you sick. You can gross us all out by going over to abouttruckdriving.com, typing three slobs into the search bar, and leaving a comment. May as well subscribe while you're there. Even if you don't want to subscribe, it's good for my numbers. <laughs> You can also send me an email at truckerdump at gmail.com or you can find me over on Twitter as Todd McCann. That's two D's, two C's, and two N's. And hey, if you enjoyed this podcast, I wouldn't be too offended if you told some friends about it. Thanks. So until next time, drive safe and 
stay out of my way. <laughs> <laughs>